Hello and welcome to the third part of our explainer video tutorial series. This is Mark Labar at BlenderPassion.com and we're going to be looking at some of the advanced transitions in this video. Let's get started. Again, starting just where we left off, let's take a look at our previous animations here. And we can see that this transition here looks a bit bland. So we're going to spice things up a bit. We'll drag out a new window, open up the graph editor, and just adjust things accordingly. Now there's our animation right there, that green curve, the Y value. So by holding down control and dragging with the middle mouse button held down, we can scale in and out of our graph editor window. And we're just going to edit this down a bit and try to give it an, some sort of a bounce effect. Let's see how that looks in the camera view. However, we see that after the very first frame, the entire little square is just way too far down the line. So we're going to stretch things out a bit and just try to get some very good interpolation going here. That looks a bit too slow for my taste. That's looking better. After I scale out this handle. Now if all of this looks rather complicated to you or if you've never opened up the graph editor before, you may want to check out some other tutorials that specialize in this. So everything's looking nice, fine. We'll just turn on the visibility for the rest of the curves. It's going to add in yet another object. Make sure emission and transparent is checked. And this right here is the blender sort of text for the logo. Scale it down accordingly, make sure it's to the right size, and we'll see that we're noticing some artifacts here. That's just called Z fighting. It's because of multiple objects on the same exact locations on the axis. So since we're, our camera is in perspective view, we want our objects close together as possible so things don't look distorted anymore. So we need to figure out what we want our text logo to do. And the reason why we have it on perspective and not orthographic is because so we can get some more interesting transitions on the y-axis because if it was on orthographic we wouldn't have the y-axis available to us. We can also animate perspective and orthographic which I did in previous explainer videos because I did want it a full range of transitions. But now the idea is to have our text logo here and then well, it's kind of hard to explain but I want it popping out of the thumbnail logo. So to do that, you can see that we're going to need something else, some sort of mask object, which is what this plane here is going to be. Scale it up accordingly so it fits the text object. I'm going to move it back a bit, make sure there aren't any artifacts. And it should be above well, closer to the camera than the text object, so it covers the text object. And we're going to give it a new material, we'll just call it cover. And it's a very simple material to set up. Just put in the is camera ray into the color input of the diffuse shader. And if we go to the preview, we can see that it looks very ugly. So we're going to have to troubleshoot that. Mess around with some values. Maybe it's this shadow checkbox here. I'm not sure. Nope. We'll check that back. And we'll keep playing around with values until we find the right thing. So, ray visibility. Let's try unchecking everything. Except camera, because then the object would be invisible. And we'll do that for all of the objects in the scene. It is a good practice to do if all of your objects are only emission shaders and you do have some diffuse in there. So now you can see our mask material is working correctly now that we've isolated a few 
things in the ray visibility, and it'll also speed up our render times considerably. So let's check our transition again. However, we have a problem here. We can see that our thumbnail logo passes through our mask on its little bounce. So that's a problem we need to address, or else our thumbnail logo too will disappear behind the mask, and that is not ideal. So we need to think about how we're going to fix this. Just a bit of problem solving is all it takes. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to keyframe these two objects here right where they right when the thumbnail logo is not behind them and in the previous frame we're going to move it off camera so now we can see everything is nice seamless and smooth so now we need to somehow animate this so it sort of moves to the right of everything. Something like that. The thumbnail will go to the left and the text will go to the right. And as the thumbnail moves along it will uncover the text. So to do that we're going to move up a few frames and we're just going to... Well, we're going to hide the mask first so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to drag everything over right where the ideal places are using our thirds line composition as guidelines for us. And then we set our keyframe and Alt-H to unhide the mask. However, there is another problem. Our mask is not moving with everything. That's because we haven't animated it yet. We want, we want our max to be right on the edge of our thumbnail so it just goes along smoothly. Something like this for the first few frames, except we need to move our mask to go with it. So to do that is very straightforward and simple. We'll just set a keyframe for it there and move it over to the edge of our thumbnail. something that looks nice, maybe even move it to the left even further and set another location keyframe and do this frame by frame if you want to you can do this at the start and end frames but I want to get more accurate values here of course you won't really see it because everything will be in motion blur and it'll be a very fast transition so whatever looks best to you whatever saves time. So now everything works nice, smoothly. And there's this right transition. We're just going to delete that because it doesn't make sense in this context. So we'll move up a few frames and leave everything there to sit for a while. Set a location keyframe and we're going to drag all this down. And set another location keyframe. So let's start from the beginning. Let's see how this looks. So right there, we kind of want our thumbnail to stay on there for longer. So we'll just drag everything forward.
So as you can see, things are a bit messy in our dope sheet. So we still want the thumbnail to stay on there for a bit longer. So I'm going to select all of these and just drag it all out. And we're going to select these keyframes and shift D duplicate them over to the other side here. Which will enable <coughs> our little square to stay where it is. And as you can see through some rather messy graph editor editing, our curves are a bit wonky. So I'll just reset so I'll just reset it there and everything looks pretty nice now. So I still kind of want the thumbnail to stay on there for longer. It's a rather quick transition, too quick for my taste. So I'll select all of these and just move it back. And there we go. Except that last bit That's looking nice. Take one final look at it as it flies off the screen. And maybe try to get a smaller window here so we can render it out faster in the preview. Just to try and get some more accurate timing. And that concludes the third part of the tutorial. If this video has helped you in any way, please like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.